Okay, welcome to the Lighthouse. I want to give everybody an update on the Singles app. We are working on it. We are working with three, four people. We're working with a programmer to, to really do it right, the right way. Otherwise, it's just going to be a WhatsApp app with a bunch of people messaging. And I, I'm already stimulated is enough. So the WhatsApp app, God willing, will come out in probably a week or two. But it's going to, it's going to be something more complicated than just the WhatsApp app. So we want to, God willing, have success in that. Okay, so today's class, we're going to talk about change your diet, change your life. It's a huge, huge topic. Um, something that I've studied a lot in, especially being in the addiction industry. Diet is definitely, food is everything that we, we can, there's no question a person can change his food, he can change his whole life. Okay, let's first start with, with the problem. It all started in the garden. We know our first, the first sin that ever occurred in, in, in history was through eating. So we know it's not something that you can take lightly. I know a lot of very religious people, they take food, as long as it's kosher, they eat as much as they want, they don't care how, how, how they feel, and it's really, that's not where Nachman's message. People are ignoring, we're ignorant in the community. I was in Israel three, four months, two, three months ago, and I would say maybe 60% of the people are, are obese. And it's, the obesity rate is unbelievable, unbelievable. It's like nobody's paying attention to it. We know our life comes down to our decisions. And 90% of our decisions we make on our mood. So when you don't feel good, and when you're, not, when you're not getting the right chemicals in your brain, you're not making the right decisions in life. And that's the difference between saying, you know what? Oh, I'll decide to go, maybe I'll go to synagogue, or, or maybe I'll, I'll wake up when my body feels like waking up. I hear that people. I said, why don't you wake up? Wake up a little early, meditate. No, my body doesn't feel like waking up yet. I said, when is that going to happen? At 10 o'clock? When is your body going to feel like waking up? You know, we can't live like, you know, I'll wait for my body to wake me up. I mean, you're living, you, you can't live so passive in life. Uh, and this is unfortunately what puts people to sleep. So Rav Nachman says, clearly that food can put us to sleep, not only physically, but spiritually. It can put you to sleep. You know, if some people realize that the way their spirituality is compared to the way their businesses are, they would have a heart attack. If they, saw, if they got into a business with absolutely no growth, they would say, I got to get out of this business quickly. They would not be so passive about it. But somehow when it comes to spirituality, people are okay with no growth. They're okay with zero growth. And it's something that should bother you. How come for business, you're running to grow? What can I do? If something's not working, you're ready to move it. But for spirituality, ah, uh, maybe I'll, if I, it doesn't bother people if, if you grow. That's a problem. That's a problem. Because if you have more energy for your business and for other parts of your area that you have growth, and when it comes to your religion, it comes to your spirituality, that you don't care if you're not growing, that's a major problem. And that's very frowned upon. That's what puts ourselves in a constricted consciousness state of mind. So let me start, let me explain to you how, how it all started. It all started in the garden, and we know it all started through eating. Eating was the first sin through Chava, she ate from the forbidden fruit. And man listened to his wife. So there you go. It all started from this. So now, how, why do we, why do we, Ramnathan says something absolutely beautiful. And I, and I think this is the problem with America today, especially the Western, Western diet. If we, if we realize that, why is a woman not allowed to go to a regular pool as a mikvah? Why can't she just go to a pool? What's the difference? The water's clean. Why does she have to go to rainwater? Why does she have to dip in rainwater? It's very simple, because rainwater represents something from Hashem. A pool represents something man-made. Anytime we go towards Hashem, we have healing, we have blessing. Anytime we connect to man-made, whenever there's a man-made, that's why a woman is not allowed to go to a mikvah with, a, with a regular water. She has to be, she has to be rainwater. Because rainwater represents from Hashem. Even if a, if, if a woman is, is a, can go in an underground spring, that's even better than a mikvah, because that really, really represents a, something that's from Hashem. So when I came to this analogy and I realized, so Ram Nachman says, whatever is in order comes from Hashem. Whatever is in this order comes from man. So here we go. What happens? Man has screwed up the whole system, especially in America. What happens when, when we, uh, Rashi says, when a person mixes two seats together, what is he showing? He doesn't believe that Hashem can provide for the world normally. That's why we're not allowed to cross beat two seats. That's why we're not allowed to have GMOs. Why, why is there such a problem with GMOs? It's because you're going against the moon of the world. Hashem says, I'm going to create the world the way I created. And what is man doing? He's screwing up the world, mixing seeds. So when, what happens? That represents out of order. So when a person doesn't go straight to Hashem, it represents out of order. So what happens? When you eat these foods in your stomach, your stomach doesn't know how to process it. Is it a tomato? Is it a fish? You know, sometimes you eat a tomato, your stomach doesn't know. Is this a tomato or is this a salmon? 
it doesn't know how to process it in your stomach, so that's where the, all this inflammation is coming. We have a major, major inflammation problem. So our problem is, is really that we want to get Hashem's method of, of, of creation. His is natural. Once we go unnatural, we start inventing things. Most things are now, they're not made in a farm, they're made in a lab. Where the things are made in a lab, they're supposed to be made in a farm. Why are they made in a lab? So Rabbi Nachman talks about here that either a person's food, he, talk, he maybe has, I think, over 20 chapters on food. I don't think there's another rabbi that spoke so much about the food-brain connection than Rabbi Nachman. And he said this 250 years ago. All the evidence is showing today. All the evidence across the board. They're showing that your body produces 90%, your stomach produces 90% of your serotonin. You understand what that means? That means you have a second brain in your stomach. Once I heard I had a second brain in my stomach, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. That means 90%, that means up to 90% of the chemical in your brain that makes you say, you know what, life is okay. Everything's going okay, which is serotonin. It's the same thing you would take if you, a person would, have a, uh, would take Prozac, or if a person would take Zoloft, what is it? It's serotonin intake. intake. So what happens is, is our brain, our, we have a second brain in our stomach, and that's representing 90% of the serotonin. So unfortunately, if you're not getting the right chemicals in your, in your stomach due to the wrong foods, due to etc., that's when you become sick, and when you become sick, you don't feel good. And that's affecting how you're thinking. And if you're thinking based on what you're eating, good luck. Where is that going to lead you to in life? So that's something we really have to, we really have to, that, uh, there's no question, many physicians now, they said, forget your problems. If you fix your diet and, and you work out, you have a better chance of getting out of the depression than through regular medical, regular medicine. That's why I tell people, what's different? Do you work out? No. Do you eat well? No. So what are we talking about your problems for? Fix that first. Be, be, Forget what your, what your mother-in-law did to you. Forget what this person did to you. Forget you're not making money. You just don't have any energy. You don't have any energy. So if we can just realize how much of an effect food has on our body, it, it's a tremendous thing. I remember personally, I think I went kosher 10 years ago, 10, 12 years ago. I remember before I went kosher, I couldn't remember a thing. I would read something. It was like, it was the most annoying feeling, reading something and not being able to... To, to, to interpret it. That's unfortunately the problem with kosher food nowadays. I never forget, my aha moment when I went kosher is when I went to this very nice restaurant and I asked the waiter, you know, this doesn't have any meat. No carne, right? No carne, right? I'm, I'm relying on the hashkacha from a Mexican waiter to tell me if the food's kosher or not. No carne. No, 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 sir. No, senor. No carne in the food, right? So I said, I said, it doesn't, something doesn't, doesn't taste right. It can't be no, no meat. He says, you, you didn't ask me for carne, but it has prosciutto, which is ham. So I, I didn't eat meat, but I ate ham. I ate ham. And so I said, okay. I said, listen, I, you can't tippy-toe around the truth in life. You know, when the problem is we like to tippy-toe. Or I have people telling me, you know what? I go to non-kosher restaurants because when I go there, I elevate the food. I elevate the food from non-kosher to elevate. I said, let me tell you something, honey. You can't say a bracha on something that's not kosher. And we know, whatever you blessed... Whatever you bless, God blesses you. So if you're going in there on a Kabbalistic venture in a non-kosher restaurant to try to elevate food, get real. Get real. Get real. So we have to get rid of the stupidity in our hearts. Now, again, it's not easy. We have a lot. I think maybe 40 to 50% of people are not kosher, which is fine. But at least have one day, kosher week. You know, let's go out Mexican night. Let's go out for kosher night this week. Just start a little bit. Even if God knows your, your, your struggles, God knows maybe your wife is not on your same level, you know, at least say, you know, one day a week I want to I eat kosher. One day a week. That's one problem. Forget about We'll talk about the other problems. But non eating non-kosher, unfortunately, it, Rabbi Nachman says here that when, when the speech is trapped in the back of the neck, it represents the word garon, represents the word 259, which is metzar garon, in the tra back of the neck. Because food is so, you can elevate, you can get to such a high level with food, if it's not, if, if the food's not properly being elevated, what happens? It gets stuck in the back of the neck. So when it gets stuck in the back of the neck, it represents three times the name Elohim, which is the name of judgment. So that's, that, that can also affect the way you speak. That can, that, when a person's praying, he, he, doesn't, he doesn't feel anything. That unfortunately, unfortunately affects the food. Again, it's not an easy thing. I don't want people to go hopeless, but at least say, you know what? One night a week, let me go kosher. One night a week. What's wrong with one night a week? There's a lot of people that are not religious in this group, and they're not. They don't eat kosher. But I said one night a week, or, or go vegan for God's sake. You know, 
Sometimes Rabbi Nachman says that a person's personality is based on the food he eats. I'm a pescatarian personally. I never heard a, I never heard a guy in a vegan restaurant say, you know what, my eggplant's too burnt. I, I never heard a guy take back food. In the kosher restaurant, look, my steak's not done. He take, makes the guy take it back four or five times. So again, our nature also, our quality of our nature is determined also by the food we eat. So you would be surprised, you're surprised what the effect of a person's eating. So we know 90% of our serotonin comes from our gut. So now you have to start paying attention how much you eat, what you eat, because that's going to affect the way you think. And the way you think is going to affect the decisions you're making. Remember, when we eat, what are we doing? We're, we're mixing the, the, the body and the soul together. Whenever, anytime the soul and the body comes together, that's when otherwise you have a soul and you have a body. Through eating, they come together. So it's a time that either a person can go to great, great spiritual heights, or the food can actually sink him. And I've seen this a lot. I've seen people, very religious, plenty of suits, plenty of tzitzit, but they, they're, they're, they're slaves to eating. They're slaves to eating and they're slaves, and they're in their, Rabbi Nachman says here, that they're, they're physically asleep. They're spiritually asleep because any time a person is trapped in a, in, a, in a habit where he can't get out of, he becomes a slave to that habit. We don't want to be in slavery. I'm, not, I'm out of slavery. The purpose of these classes is to break out, not to break down. If the food's making you break down, where, where are you going to go? And that's what, ha the key in life is to grow. If we're not growing because, because of food, you, you know, what does it say about the person? So that's something that, that you know, if you, especially if you pray about it and you understand that the, the spiritual essence of, of eating right, you're going to be shocked at what's going to, what, what happens, okay? So Rabbi Nachman says here that, that a person's not eating properly. Can, unfortunately, there's foods that can put you to physical sleep. We know why. We're going to talk about the gut leak now. Uh, when a person's not getting the, the proper serotonin, it's because he's not getting the right toxins. I've gotten people in these classes, I, I, maybe if people have lost, maybe I, one guy lost 70 pounds, another guy lost 50 pounds, and this guy lost 20 pounds, I would say I combined 1,000 pounds easy from people listening. Because that's what we want to do. We want to create momentum. All I have to do is create a little momentum in your life, and next thing you know, when you feel good, and things are going good in your life, I promise you, you're not going to think about all the things that's missing in your life. People only focus on what's missing in their life, is when nothing else is good, when they're, in, when they're tired, when they're in a bad mood. What happens? They start thinking about their, their, their problems. But when you're feeling good, I promise you, you have no time to think about this nonsense. When you don't feel good, all of a sudden, oh, she's coming over for Shavuot, oh, this, you start, all of a sudden you start thinking about all the problems and all the things. And at the end of the day, it's just feelings. It's just a bunch of feelings. It's nothing else. If you were feeling good, you would never act that way. So remember, this is major, because if we're feeling the way we're eating, it's going to eventually lead to that, okay? So he says here, Rabbi Nachman, that food is putting, putting us spiritually asleep. The Gemara says, in Lesson 61, he says that our sages teach us that the stomach sleeps. Commentaries point out that the effort required by, for the stomach to, di to digest food, it tires the person out. That means if it's eating too much, if it's, if it's got to do too much work, the stomach, what happens? It becomes tired. And then it shuts down. And then that's when you become tired. That's when you go to sleep. So let's talk about gut leaks. Okay? Which is one of the biggest problems today, I would say. Nowadays, because of the toxic issues that we have, because of the amount of stress that we have, there's tremendous amount of inflammation. And now studies are showing that 70% of all illnesses, including cancer, including autoimmune diseases, are leading to inflammation. Today, one of the biggest things that made me lose weight and change the way I, th I, was, I thought was fixing my gut. What happens is we have, a, we have a fish lining in our stomach. But what happens is when we're stressed out all day, what happens? We have no immune system. So any little toxin gets into your stomach, you become sick. If you have chronic, chronic stress, what is your body doing? Your body's fighting this threat. It can't mm -hmm. fight regular things. Normally you'd be able to eat food if you were, if you were calm, you're, you're, it, would, it would fight. You're, you're, your body would fight that. But if it's constantly dealing with stress, then it can't deal with this and it can't deal with that. So one of the things that unfortunately leading, it creates inflammation. Once we have gut leaks in our stomach, which is where 90% of our serotonin or 80% of our serotonin, that's causing us to be depressed. So that's why it's showing now that gut leak is correlated to anxiety, 
is correlating to the depression, is correlating to acnes, because what happens when the blood doesn't stay in the, in the, in the net? It goes into your bloodstreams, and once it goes into your bloodstream, then oh, your bloodstream becomes toxic. And then, all of a sudden, your body becomes inflamed. Once there's inflammation, it affects your brain. And then that's when you don't feel good. That's when a person doesn't get the right chemicals in the stomach. Fixing the gut, I would recommend this book called Dr. Axe, called Eat Dirt. I would recommend go to Dr. Axe's website. He has many ways of fixing the gut. But fixing the gut is, is like fixing your second brain. Imagine if a guy had, a, had something in his brain. What would he do? He wouldn't just leave it there. He would go to the best neurosurgeons, the best brain surgeons to fix what's wrong with his brain, correct? Right? If 90% of the serotonin is, is in here, you go to a doctor, what he tells you? Here, you take a pill. And, in, and sometimes we've had, because we've had such stressful times in our life, sometimes we've taken anxiety pills, those anxiety pills have an effect. They create toxins in your body. And sometimes even drugs, there's no question. In, in people in, in the drug community, their stomachs are shot. Their stomachs are shot because of all the drugs and all the chemicals. They don't allow the right chemicals to function. So they can wake up, all of a sudden they wake up, what's wrong with my life? Normally, if you have regular serotonin, you don't wake up like that. But when you're not getting the right chemicals, it, it, even the toxicity, what does it do? It also blocks regular nutrients from you getting new, regular nutrients from a, from a regular salad. So fixing the gut is a must. Fixing the gut could cr be created by stress. It could be created by all of a sudden when we have gluten and all these other foods. What happens? That gluten it blocks, it blocks and creates, and it adds to this all this ingestion of permeability. So that's something I recommend off the bat. You can fix your gut. You, your life could change automatically because if you're dealing with an inflammation issue, it's not that you're heavy. You have an inflammation issue. If you're inflamed and you're trying to lose weight. It's very difficult because you're not gonna you're not gonna feel like it. You understand? And you're not gonna feel like it. You're not gonna think about. You're not gonna think like it. So fixing the gut is a must. That's what the that's what the Gemara was saying. That, that that when your stomach is asleep, what is it sleeping? It's tiring you out because you're not getting. It's overworking. So we don't want to get into a situation where our stomachs overwork because then it affects our mind. He says that Rambam says that a person's main vitality lies in his intellect. One who's not using his intellect properly is considered asleep. And Hashem has no pleasure from his work. That means when you're praying and you're too tired to open up your eyes when you're looking at Sidur because of your, your, your meal last night, that's a problem. Because it's affecting your spirituality, and then it becomes chronic. Then it becomes chronic. And then you say, you know what? This religion is not for me. No, you're just, you, any religion would, would be for you. You're just, you're just not waking up with the right chemicals. Your, your body's dragging you down. It says, the mind develops through nourishment it receives when one eats, un, in one eats food. He says, it says, Rav Nachman says, listen one, that a person's, when a person eats the wrong types of food, it's going to mar your sense of judgment. You're not going to make the right judgment calls. You're not going to feel. You're going to, you're going to create impulses. You're going to be making decisions based on feelings. This is not just a nutrition class. This is, I'm telling you, the connection between this and your brain. You change your diet, you change your life. Change your diet, you, change, you do exercise, you can change your life. That's why I tell people, forget about your problems. You can talk about your problems all day long. But you need the willpower to get going. You need the willpower to, to deal with them. If you're not feeling right, it's not going to happen. He says, the fun, Renachman says here, the functioning of the mind depends on what we eat. The nutrients are absorbed through the blood, but if there's blockages, it, 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 it senses or, or impairs our judgment. He says here in the book Aleph Base, he says, Rabbi Nachman further teaches that one's personality trait also depends on a person's diet. Imagine that. Whatever you're eating represents your personality. There's no question when I stopped eating meat, my personality was much different. Less angry, less, more patient. It was just, it was just I felt differently. I felt differently. That's something we have to consider. This too is because food affects the mind through the nourishment. Okay? He also says that all the overeating, anytime a person... Remember, we have to understand some of the way the klipot work. Let me explain to you the way the klipot work. If you eat a certain amount of food, and you eat, you feel full, you feel okay, that's good. Anything in that excess in life, that's when the other side gets a chance to grab you. For example, if you have the right amount of food, you get energy. If you have too much, you get tired. Same thing with money. If, you're, if, you're, if a person is running after money, 
if he, if he, if he makes an effort to, to, to make parnasa, if he runs too much, he gets tired, the klipot can affect him. Sex also. Sex, you need to have babies. Too much, it can get you tired. So the klipot, klipot are negative husk that surround us. These work on excess. Once there's excess, that means once you go over the line, the klipot attach to the person, and then that's what makes things very difficult, and it makes things almost impossible to do. So that's what we want. We don't want klipot. We want to be happy. We want to be satisfied. Okay? Lesson 47, Ram Nachman says that, he's saying something very beautiful. He says, what was the main thing that Hashem loved the Jews so much? Why would, there was a discussion with the angels in the Gemara. He says, what was the thing that Ram Nachman loved so much about the Jews? He says, he says, when the Jews, he says, how could I not love the Jews? They're satisfied with a, with a kazayit. That means they bench on a kazayit. Not, they don't have to be full to, to bench. So Ramna, here he's saying us here, that it, Ramna, it says, someone who stepped in desire for eating is certainly very far away from the truth. His real problem is not the eating. He's got a deeper spiritual problem. We already spoke about, with everybody, we spoke about that problems don't start as regular problems. First, they start as spiritual problems. The spiritual problem is a lack of truth. I know some people have confessed to me. They said, listen, the reason why I'm so overweight is because I have confidence issues, and the weight hides my confidence. I don't have to deal with life, because the weight becomes a barrier so I can hide it in my own skin, and I don't have to deal with people, because they have no self-confidence. So they create the weight as something to stay in, that, in, in themselves and not have to deal with life. So what he's saying is true. If you look at a lot of people, they, they don't want to deal with life. They don't want to deal with the challenges, so they, they hide in the weight. So he says one of the major things he's saying here that, that we know that a person is going to have judgments if he's always craving food. Craving food is a sign of judgment. Why? Because he says, how can I not bless them? When, it, when God blesses you, it's because he, he sees that you're satisfied with enough. When, you're, when you always need more in life, that's when you take the, He takes the blessing away from you. It's either when a person eats properly, what happens? His face shines. Right? When he eats too much, what happens? His face goes down. His face shining represents the truth. A person's face in, in a desire for food, all of a sudden, I know, all of a sudden you could say, you know what, Hashem and His Bodhidut, you want to fix your weight problem? First, confess on the truth. Say, you know what? Fix the spiritual problem, and all of a sudden Hashem will attract you to lose the weight. Because it's a real problem. It starts in the spirituality. The spirituality is not being in a met, not being truth. And that truth is affecting the weight. That's what he's telling us here. He's saying here, because when a person has, when a, when a person, he says here, when a person breaks his desire for eating, he says, the Holy One will perform a miracle for him. He will perform a miracle for you because he sees that a person can control himself. He's satisfied with what he has. That will make you imagine a person, and that connects to what? Truth leads to wealth. What does falseness lead to? What does lies lead to? Poverty. So he says, someone, someone who's beset by constant, constant judgment, it's going to be a sign of poverty. A sign of, of, of sign of running after food, it's a sign of, of be, not being in the truth, and God forbid it could lead to poverty. This is lesson 47. So the first thing is we want to do is, we, this is why when a person fasts, what, what happens when there's trouble in the community? What do the Jews, what do, the Jews do? We declare a fast. Why do we declare a fast? Because we're, we, we have dinim. Dinim, judgment, come from the eating. So what do we do? We can rectify it through when a person is able to fast, he rectifies it even when you have a bad dream. Why do you fast when you have a bad dream? They say when a person has a bad dream, a remedy is to fast. Because what you eat can affect how you dream. So what do you do? You're supposed to fast. Because you're supposed to make a tikkun for the meal you, you, you screwed up in. Because the food, what happens when we don't eat the right food, the extra food goes to the other side. Once the other side gets a hold of the food, what happens? It gets to you. Of course, Shabbat, holidays, we're allowed to eat more. But it can't be all about food. It can't be all about food. It can't be. Why? This is because the desire for eating, Hashem will hide His face from you. He will hide the, His face from this person. Imagine that. He will hide his, his face from Him. He will not come to truth. He will be very lethargic. 
So he says, the God's answer to the angels was, how can I not favor the Jews? They were happy. They said, when, a pers- when, when they were just content, they didn't have to be full. That's when he showed favor. A person wants a miracle in his life, he could say, you know what, Hashem, you said that you favor the Jews if a person is content. Boom! You can have a miracle just through breaking your desire for eating them. Believe it or not. And that will connect you to the truth, and that will connect you to everything. Because when we're stressed out, what do we do? We eat. We eat. We don't do teshuvah when we're stressed out. What do we do? When a person's stressed out, I remember when I was stressed out, the last thing I was doing is doing teshuvah. I wasn't in the mood to do it. What do you want to do? Check out. Check out junk food, etc., etc., and get some quick dopamine so you feel good for the day. That's not the way we're supposed to handle our problems. Just checking out, is not, that's not the way we... We don't want to reduce our, our responsibility, we want to increase. Now, I did this and I saw major miracles just by breaking my desire for eating. And I'm going to show you, we're going to give you some science behind it, I'm going to give you some education on it, that I think it's key education that can really, literally, literally, it can change your life. Again, we never saw a skinny guy drinking Diet Coke. I never saw, I've yet to see a skinny guy eating, drinking Diet Coke. So I think it's, 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 there's some things we can tweak in the diet that can create tremendous, tremendous change in our diets. But spiritually, what's going on is an absence of truth. That's, that's the real, real problem behind it. Again, the truth hurts, but it'll set you free. Nobody wants to deal with the truth. It hurts, I'm going to tell you the truth. That's why sometimes I say, you know what, so maybe I don't want to offend anybody, but I said, you know what, 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 what are we lying to ourselves? Well, why not? Let, let people hear the truth. If they, if they like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. I can't hide around curtains like every other, some of the rabbis are doing because they don't want to offend people. It's not about offending, it's about change. It's about, I myself had these issues. I myself had all these issues. I was 40, 50 pounds heavier than I am today. Um, I have 10 times more energy. I feel great and I, and I don't feel, and I, I realize how much of my life is affected by my mood. Your shalom bites are also affected by your mood. You could fix a shalom bite problem just by proper eating. <laughs> Guy comes home, he's hungry. Why, is, why isn't the food? Well, what do you want from me? Oh, the stupidity. Fights are stupidity. Look at the contents of the fighting. The fighting is over stupidity. Stupidity. Especially a guy yelling at his wife because the food's not good. What does that say about the character of the person? What do you think Hashem thinks about that person? When he's yelling at his, his wife because the food is not well. You could see he's in, he's in a table for food. You know, when the Jews complained in, in, in Egypt about the food, about the meat, they said they wanted more meat, right? They had plenty of meat with them. But they were worried about tomorrow's meat. So that's why Hashem punished them so bad. Because they had meat right now. They could have cut the meat right away. But their gluttony, their gluttony wanted more, 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 more. You understand? They had food. They had plenty of food. Even when they were in Egypt. What did they say when they were in the wilderness? We wish we had the, the lemons, the free lemons and the fish in Egypt. Oh my God, somebody took you out of Rinker's Island and you're complaining about, you know, I wish I had that free kosher food in jail. I mean, what, what kind of, you understand the mentality of people? Uh, we wish we had the, the free food in jail. What is that? I mean, this is something that we have to realize. So he's saying here, in other words, any time that a person is going to hit, be hit with poverty, he's going, it's a blemish of the truth. It's a blemish of the truth. That means that the truth has been blemished. So that's why we rectify it. How do we rectify it? By fasting. By fasting, we rectify it. Because what do you do when you fast? What do you do? You, you're craving, your, your, your soul is getting fed. Anytime that the body is getting so much, so much sustenance and the, and the soul is getting nothing, there's going to be a problem. Because we're supposed to be spiritual beings having a physical experience. Not, a, not physical beings having a spiritual experience. You get it? Nowadays, it's like a physical thing. Oh, that sounds nice, a little spirituality. No, you should be spiritually and then having a physical experience in this world. It becomes, now it's, it's the opposite. It's the complete opposite. So food is either med- medicine or poison. So, let's talk a little bit about practical, practical, practical. So now we, understood, we understand that it, it, the real problem is, is a lack of truth. We understand that. Rav Nachman says in Lesson 39 that if a person constantly has cravings, it's a sign that he has an enemies above. Enemies above. That's a sign of craving. Okay? I'm not talking about regular cravings. I'm saying if it's, a, if it's a chronic, chronic, chronic cravings. Everybody's hungry. Everybody needs a snack. It's not, I'm talking about if it's a chronic thing. Like you wake up, like, what's, what do I eat now? It's all about where you're eating. That's not a good sign. 
That's not a good sign. If we can break that, we can have Hashem shyness, we can be connected to the truth. Once you're connected to the truth, then everything else happens in, in our life. Okay? So again, we want to first fix the gut, because the gut is like the engine. The engine decides everything. If you fix the gut, I guarantee you, most people have gut leaks. It can come from the wrong foods, it, it can come from stress. Specifically stress, if a person can realize that it's, I know a lot of people that are trying to lose weight, and they're eating good foods, and they're exercising, and they can't lose weight. Why? Because every time we're stressed out, you know what happens? We release sugar. Stress, what happens in stress? Your body doesn't know if you're going into a famine for three days, or you're in your office. So what happens when you're stressed out a lot, chronically? Your body releases glucose, it releases sugar, and that sugar stays in your stomach. It's literally belly fat. And that's where the sugar goes to store it in case you go into a famine. So that's why with belly fat, the, the number one thing to lose belly fat is re reducing cortisol. You almost have to go on, the, on, on, on an Amuna diet. <laughs> why am I releasing cortisol all day long? I don't have, I don't have Amuna. I don't have trust in God. That's going to be very, that's going to impact your weight, that's going to impact everything. But if you're constantly, in, most people I'm dealing with, they're a threat. Every day is a threat to them. Look what this person did to me. Look at that person. Your body can't heal itself and reduce the inflammation if it's dealing with an inflammation all day long. It just can't happen. It just can't happen. You have to chill the hell out. I tell people, can you just chill out? Can you chill out already? Can you stay present? Number one thing I tell them, what, what's today's date? Let's stay in today's date. Why are we thinking about tomorrow? Well, it's, the, the hardest thing is just to get a guy present. Just what's today's date? Stay focused on today. Tomorrow's tomorrow. We don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. Just, just live today. But we're so anxious about tomorrow that you don't even let your body heal. And then at the end of the day, what happens? You don't have the willpower to do exercise because you're exhausted from all the cortisol roller coasters in the day. Up and down, up and down. And what happens when you get tired from the cortisol? You take coffee. And there you go up again. And then you go down, and then you go up again. So what happens at the end of the day, five o'clock? Oh, I'm exhausted. Why? Because you just went on a, on a magic roller coaster ride that nobody invited you to go. Who invited you to go? You have to have a Muna. I tell people, what's wrong with having a little Muna? What is it? What, what you do, what you're doing now? It's not helping you. So one thing that, that, that literally a person stress and eats the wrong foods, it creates inflammation. And that's what's causing our stomachs to be the way they are. It says, researchers have shown time, again, again, and high levels of inflammation are the center of many diseases. Are the center of many diseases. It's saying here, together, cardiovascular diseases, various cancers, diabetes, count for 70% of all deaths in the United States. And the common element in all of them is inflammation. So inflammation comes from food, inflammation comes from eating the wrong food, inflammation comes from stress. All these things cause inflammation. Because your body can't handle, I tell people, your body cannot handle a war and handle life at the same time. You, can't, you just can't handle it. It's not possible. So one has to give. You have to give up one. Either you have a muna or your life is over. That's what I tell people. Get a muna or get hinom. There's no other option. Because you, you can't live in this life without having faith. And, and that's why Rav Nachman says in Lesson 7 that the main cause of a person suffering in his life is because of a lack of amuna. It's a lack of amuna. Okay? Let's talk about the, the practical side. So we know stress is not good for losing weight. It's not good for because stress, it does the opposite. It releases, it, 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 it hypes up your sugar. And that's what, that's what you don't want. You want, you, want your, you, want it, you want it lower. You want cortisol to be low and that you can actually lower your cortisol through his bodhidut. Being happy, talking his brother, dude, you're calm, you talk to Hashem about your problems, next thing you know, you don't worry about your problems, and then the cortisol doesn't go all day. Imagine you can, have a, you can lose 10, 20 pounds just doing his brother, dude, every day. Maybe then, then people will do the challenges, right? You tell him 20 pounds, okay, I'll take a shot. Spiritual? Man, not for me. I don't have time to talk to Hashem. But what do, you, what do, what do I tell people to talk to God? Because if you don't talk to God, and, and you don't have a coping method, then how are you going to deal with your problems in your life? How are you going to deal with your problems? What are you going to do? Who are you going to talk to? Who's got the answer in life? Who's got the answer? Can anybody guarantee you anything? Can anybody guarantee you anything? Nobody can guarantee you anything. So you might as well cope with God. Having to go to do it, connect to the truth, and you'll see all of a sudden the inflammation will go away, 
Next thing you know, your weight will go away, you'll catch a little momentum in your life, and then you're gonna go shopping. Do I need to tell a guy that lost 20 pounds, do me a favor, go shopping. Do I need to tell him to go shopping? Go, go, go try better clothes, go try. That's what happens with momentum. The key to, to my classes is not information, it's just to get a little momentum. Five pounds here, next thing you know you think differently, next thing you know you speak differently. Your handshake will be different when you start getting a little momentum. You're shaking your hand like this. You, 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 you have confidence. A person who shakes, you could tell a person's handshake if he has confidence or he has no confidence. That's the effect of momentum. But we can start first, we can start with our, with, with, with our body. Rabbi Nachman says, you have to do teshuva on the body before the soul. On the body before his soul. A lot of people tell me, why do I want to be religious? Look how this guy looks. Look how that guy looks. I don't want to be like that. Why do I want to be like that? That's not what religious is. This is just people you're looking at. That's not what this, It's the complete opposite. But people think, that means religion. Religion means this. It's completely, completely ludicrous view of, of life. So, we have to understand, I'm going to give you guys some science. We already spoke about the spiritual. Some science that I think could definitely, could definitely change the way you, 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 you look at diet. It can get, definitely give you some tips. I've done a lot of research on, on nutrition. I've studied it for a while. So again, we have to understand, a calorie, and a, people count calories all the time. That's wrong. Your body loses weight based on metabolism. You can't count calories. Diet Coke has zero calories, but what happens? In your stomach, it inflates your stomach. So calories, counting calories is not the right way. It's a metabolic effect. That means your metabolism works differently with di f different foods. You, you people are, oh, fat-free, zero sucrose, but next thing you know, the thing has 65 chemicals in your body, and when your stomach takes it, all of a sudden your stomach's completely white because your stomach does not know how to digest it. So we have to stop counting calories. It's think, I have to increase my metabolism. How do I increase my metabolism? Well, how? Working out and eating the right foods. Certain foods spike your metabolism, and certain foods, I'm sorry, certain foods spike your sugar, and that insulin sugar is what's, what's, what's causing the fat loss. It's the spikes. For example, if a person knows that uh, a potato, a regular potato and a sweet potato have a completely different effect on your body. One, one regular potato spikes up, spikes up the sugar, a sweet potato doesn't have the same effect as, as that. A sweet potato is 10 times better than a regular potato. Just by switching that, it's, it's all that because your body reacts differently to certain meta metabolic things. Corn, these things, for example, bread. What's the problem with bread nowadays? Thank God we have a, we have a great baker in, in Aventura that just, that, that just opened. He makes organic, organic uh, stone ground bread that doesn't create the same effect as the other breads that, that blow, you, blow your system up. Because what happens when every time we have this, the high spike in sugar or high, high spike in glucose, that's when our brain goes, our reward, crash. We don't, want, we don't want spikes. We want low sugar throughout the day. For example, a fruit. A fruit has sugar, but it has fiber. So the fiber does, prevents the spike. It prevents the spike from going up. So we don't want spikes. Spikes lead to, at the end of the day, anxiety, depression. Because if you're going up and down, your mood constantly goes up and down. We don't want spikes, we want, we want balanced, balanced sugar. So remember, stop counting calories. Olive oil has 150 calories, it's the greatest thing for you. Right? A Snickers bar, light Snickers bar has 150 calories. You can't compare that calories to this calories. Instead, because one affects your body completely different. That's one of the biggest things that I realized. I stopped counting calories. I, I, I focused more on foods that were whole, not processed. The process is the problem. Because, oh, you know, where did it, back then, in the 1930s, you know what they used to say? They came out with food used to be called imitation food. It wasn't regular food, that, there was a sign. Imitation food. Only into the 1970s did the food become, instead of imitation, it, beca it became processed, it became regular food. But before it was called imitation food. So what are the common trends? This all started all with, with industrialization. When they started refining sugar and they were starting wheat, that's when the modern American diet started. That's what's causing all the illnesses today. Okay? What, what happened? Instead of, instead of whole foods, we used to have whole foods. Right? Made by Hashem. We went to refined foods. Instead of complexity, we went to simplicity. Instead of leaves, animals used to eat what? Leaves. 
right? Now they eat seeds. What happens? America wants to take a one pound chicken and make it five pounds. And next thing you know, you got it. You're eating, a, you're eating a, the hormones, and next thing you know, you eat a regular, I have friends, friends from France, they come to America, next thing you know, why, why am I feeling like this way? I, I'm eating the same diet as I did in France, here I'm 30 pounds over. Because guess what? America, Europe pays the, pays the medical bills. America makes money when you're sick. How do you like that one? GMOs, GMOs are prohibited in over 60 countries. In Europe, there's no GMOs. Why is there no GMOs in Europe? Let's think about why. Why? Because they're paying the bills. <laughs> yeah. Why? Why? Because if I'm paying the bills, why am I going to? It's going to cost me ten times. So the GMOs in Europe, no GMOs. In America, what happens? We're, we're making chickens from one pound. So what are you doing with Hashem's creature? You're taking a one pound chicken and you're making it five pounds, and then you're eating it based on chromosomes. Or you even see chicken, examples of chickens that have six legs, for God's sake. And this is what people are eating. So that's what happens. What happens? You're eating the, the six-legged chicken, Kentucky Fried Chicken. How do you think they have so many wings? How do you think they have so many wings? They chemically modify. You're eating this chicken. You're eating this chicken. And next thing you know, what are you eating? You are what you eat. And then you get affected. Your stomach gets affected by those chromosomes. And then you have inflammation. And you can say, what did I do? I just ate a piece of meat. And why do I feel this way? And that's where there's so much depression, that's where there's so much anxiety, and that's why, because we have to go for more whole foods instead of refined foods. So, before it was, it, it was regular animals, then now it's factory animals. It's factory animals, animal cruelty. So this is all, anything, remember, anything that, that goes from not Hashem, not natural from Hashem, that's the way it digests normally. If it's not natural, then it's made by man. It represents out of order. Out of order means your stomach doesn't know how to digest it. If your stomach doesn't know how to digest it, it's going to tire you out. And your stomach is 90% of the serotonin making the decisions that you're making today. You know, it's amazing how nowadays they put specifically, if you realize, there's a specific, when specifically processed sugars, there's a specific reward center in your brain of dopamine. Same thing that a person would get on on cocaine or, or dopamine, the same high, he can get through food. Why? Because the same studies are showing and there's a nucleus, a compass in your brain, it's a reward center, that certain foods, sugary foods, do the exact same trigger on your brain. So what happens? You can't just have one chip. You're addicted to, this, to the food. Because what happens? It doesn't react the same way in your body. It actually triggers the same exact part of your brain as dopamine, as, as regular. So when you see overweight, eating junk food, they can't stop doing it. It's because they're specifically made the, the food with that effect so people become addicted to it. And it, be, and it lights up that part of your brain that, that creates, creates more. So it's very hard to stop a craving when the food you're eating is giving you that sugar. So again, it's okay to cheat once in a while, but if it's a constant thing, if it's a constant thing, it's chronic, it's, it's, it's you're, you're literally, I tell people, how many years, how many lifetimes do you think you have to live here? Live here one time. You have to guard your health. The Gemara says that a person who, who stands behind a, a, a leaning wall, right, his sins are going to come off him. That means when a person goes and relies on a doctor, God forbid, to heal him, already that's a problem. Because now you're putting yourself in the doctor's hands. You don't want to get to that point. We don't want to get to, God forbid, um, Go, going to the doctor for that for those reasons. So one, those are one of the things. Inflammation is huge based on the gut leaks, based on this, and this, this thing is is the craving. So we have to realize we have to stay away from some of these foods because these foods they they spike up our blood sugar and they create that reward center in our brain. The same thing as a drug, and that's what makes you crave it and crave it and crave it and crave it. So we have to understand that they specifically make things for that. Otherwise, the FDA FDA would be all over on it. Second thing is the best thing you could do for, for a person's stomach is the less ingredients the better. If it has more than five, six ingredients in the food, it's too many. Five, six, seven ingredients. More than that, 50 sugars, this, this, that, that. Who knows the names of these, these things anymore? Those things, again, even though it says zero calories, even though if it says 20 calories, that doesn't mean it's going to not create inflammation in your system, and that affects your metabolism, and that affects the rest of your body. Remember, the longer the shelf life, the shorter your life. 
Bread is supposed to go bad in three, four days. So the longer the shelf life, the shorter your life. You have to understand. Again, it's not, this is not fun to talk about, but this is definitely something that's affecting our lives. And it's something that you can, if a person is able to break his eyes for food, he can change his life. That's why. There's no question that people, if they just did this, they wouldn't think about all their emotions, they wouldn't think about their problems, because you would generally feel much better. You would generally feel much better. So again, not all carbs are created equal, different things. Let's focus on, on a person having metabolic, see what foods are metabolically, of different metabolic effects than just having cravings all the time. Because what happens is, is every, the more you crave these things, the more hungry you're going to be, the more hungry you're going to be, the more you're going to be up and down, the less willpower we're going to have. So these are the big, big highlights that, that we're dealing with today. And I really recommend it. First start doing his bodhidut and asking Hashem to connect to the truth. And at the end of the day, once we conquer this, you're going to get so much self-confidence. Because again, self-confidence is not created overnight. It's one little victory, another victory. Wow, I lost 10 pounds. Everybody gives you compliments. Next thing you feel better. And that's how we create it. Otherwise, we have to focus on that. Because that's how we we're able to think differently. And once we think differently, we're generally going to become more spiritual. So again, remember 90% of our of happiness is at the end of your fork. Happiness is at the end of your fork. Believe it or not, the key to happiness could be at the end of your fork. All right? That's today's class.